Hello, Easy Astronomy here, and yesterday we took a look at the Polemaster QHY CCD Polar Alignment Scope, which claims to align faster and easier than any other polar alignment process out there. Today, we're going to install it and take a look at it tonight to see whether or not that's actually true. Let's go! So how this is going to work is this is going to go into the adapter, which is going to be attached to this, which is going to be fixed to the back of the camera through these screws. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw all of these in to the back through the front, which is a little bit counterintuitive, so we don't have to do this when we get out there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the polar cap off and then insert the first ring so that it's facing to the right while facing it. And then I'm going to tighten down the screws that keep it locked in position with the Allen wrench. And we're done. Wasn't that fast. Now we're going to insert the polar scope. So that the micro USB is facing the opposite direction the thumb screw is. And we're going to tighten it down. And there we go. Alright, so I followed the installation options on the uh, QHY CCD page and downloaded both of the drivers and that worked perfectly. Uh, so that'll be good. So what it wants you to do now is that I have Polaris in range is adjust the gain and exposure so that I can see the most star possible. So, now it's going to ask me to double click on Polaris, which I'm going to do. Double click and then it wants me to rotate these red dots around so that it matches up perfectly with the stars around it. And it looks like we have it here. So we're going to hit next. And no, I don't want to use my alignment from earlier because this took me a couple tries to get correct. So now I'm going to double click on this one right in the center. And I think the closer to the center you get it, the more accurate it gets. So now it wants me to rotate my mount clockwise, which is west for me. So I'm going to do that now. And it recommends 30 to 45 degrees. And I'm not sure if it can go over 45 degrees. But I don't, I don't want to push it so that I just get the most accurate possible polar alignment for reasons that uh, will be apparent later. So now we're going to double click it again and rotate it the same direction another 30 to 45 degrees. And then when that's done, it's going to have us double click on it one last time and it's going to draw the circle around it and so what we're going to do is we're going to park our mount to home so that it rotates all the way back to the, plate, to the point where it started and it wants us to verify that it just turns around that radius with Polaris in the center and it remained all along the center very nicely there so we're going to go ahead and double click Polaris again and then move the red dots so that they're centered and it looks like they are centered 
And so now we're going to adjust our altitude and azimuth bolts or screws or whatever we have to get Polaris into that green circle up there. And it's the better, the more you have it in the center, the better and more accurate your polar alignment is going to be. So let's just hold on a quick sec while I get this thing in the center. And that's pretty darn good. So we're going to move on to the next step. Let me unpark my mount really quick so that we're not... I'm not sure whether tracking it at all helps, but I don't want to take any chances whatsoever. So then we're going, it's going to pull up the dots one last time, and I think only one little adjustment is going to be needed. And instead of using the rotate slider, you can also use the arrow keys on your laptop or computer or whatever you're using. So now it's going to open up this star window, and it's going to want to put us uh, the green circle right on top of the red circle. And the, uh, the magnified view is in the toolbar to the left. So you can use your alt azimuth screws one more time to get that centered directly on top of it. So we'll just wait for a quick second while I do this. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. So what we're going to do is we are going to click finished and then we're going to double check with PhD Guiding's drift alignment to make sure that our polar alignment is absolutely perfect. Alright, so here's the thing. After altitude slowing, uh, PhD did, didn't do so well. Uh, it was giving like massive, massive errors and like even greater than like the 11 we got for uh, altitude. But then when I got back and I did it again, we got crazy tiny small errors for altitude uh, without actually touching the mount anymore that we had done in the uh, pole master alignment, which leads us leads me to believe uh, that it actually works really, really well uh, down to within. Uh, granted, there was lots and lots of turbulence uh, in the air that night but it leads me to believe that it can get it down in a faster time than what it was uh, just in PhD. This was actually a pretty good reminder of like how finicky exactly PhD polar alignment can be and I'll go a little more into that in the final thoughts but uh, it seems like this product was uh, helpful after all, which is not bad. So now we're going to go back and do azimuth twice, because it seems like doing it twice has some kind of application to it. Right, and it looks like we're getting the results that we want, so uh, the pole master's holding out on us, so that's great. Alright, so my overall impressions of the Pole Master were a little bit interesting. Because uh, originally in like in the unboxing I was like, oh we'll see if it actually works and all that, and I was really surprised when in the first couple nights I'd try to realign over and over and over again only to get errors of 14, 16, 18 when I did it with PhD. And it was a pretty consistent error, and I didn't know what happened. So uh, I figured that tonight I would give it uh, all of the, just one last try before uh, I called it quits and said this really isn't superior to PhD drift alignment at all. Uh, but then I got the results that I did, which confused me a little bit because uh, I don't know how it, why it did it then and not 
the past two nights when I had tried it out before. So overall, I guess that means, in terms of the Pole Master claiming to be faster, I don't think that puts really... I don't think that puts me really in any place to be able to comment on that, because my results were so up and down. And yes, that Pole Master alignment that I, that I am going to upload was indeed faster than the average time it would take to drift a line on PhD, and it was faster by a lot. But there were nights when I had two-hour sessions with the Pole Master trying to polar align, and the thing with the Pole Master is that you cannot be sure without outside verification whether or not the product actually works. So. I think the variability is something that would definitely hurt the value of this product. But overall, I think that if you were able to double check and get it on a night where it wasn't so windy or turbulent, which would throw any drift alignment, polar alignment guiding system off, then if you take out that factor, I feel like it could definitely be a great tool to help you polar align. So on an overall scale, I'd give this product an 8.5 out of 10, all factors considered. Alright, so I think that's going to wrap up the Pole Master series for this. And uh, I, I had a lot of fun doing it, editing it. Uh, so if you'd like to see more reviews, please don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know. There's also a, a website out that's in the description below. It's www.easyastronomy.net So, uh, if you have some spare time, please go check that out. Let me know how you feel about my content and the stuff I'm doing. And, uh, most of all, whether you like it or not, and whether it's helpful to you. Because that's what this is really about at the end of the day. So thank you. And as always, here's to Dark Nights and Chris Guys.